On Friday morning, July 17th, 1987, the small town of Comfort, Texas, became the scene of a heroic rescue and tragic loss. Much of the footage you will see was taped on that day by the banks of the Guadalupe River. That day probably was one of the most traumatic in my whole life. We thought that the only people that were alive were the ones that were around us, and we were scared to death. I know I'll never get over this, because it's something that's going to be in my mind forever. It was the day they were supposed to go home. The more than 300 children at the church camp were awakened early. The river was flooding. If they didn't leave soon, their buses might not be able to leave at all. They come in there rushing us up and everything. Tell us to get up, get packed and all this stuff. And everybody was asking why, why. They said we got to get out of here because the river was flowing over. I mean, we started going around the corner. We would go down the hill, then the water started coming in the bus and stuff. We tried to back up, but then the bus got stuck, so they made all of us get out of the bus. And that's whenever the first wave hit us and um, started scattering people to different trees. Floodwaters of the Guadalupe River had swept away 43 people in a matter of seconds. A call for help went out. A television news helicopter already covering the flood, piloted by Vietnam vet Mike Rice, headed for the site of the accident, where cameraman David Villarreal shot this footage. It just all seemed like routine flooding to, to us, and uh, really had no idea what we were about to witness. We were able to see the kids clinging onto the, you know, the trees like ants, surrounded by rushing water. A Texas Department of Public Safety helicopter was already trying to pick someone out of the treetops, now barely above the 60 mile an hour flood waters. Seventeen-year-old Chris Ray was the first to be rescued. How many are there of you? Uh, a bus over there, 40. How many? 40. In the bus? Well, the bus. We all got the bus. Where is the bus going? Going down. As news bulletins spread the word of the flood and accident. More help arrived, but many parents feared the worst. I know for me that it was like you've got two daughters down there. Now, obviously, they both are not going to make it. You know, which one would you choose? Which one would you have come back? The news crew picked up volunteer fireman Ray Masterman to try to help rescue the kids. All of a sudden, I think all three of us saw the people at the same time, and it seemed like every tree had a face or two in it. It was a, a, a very dangerous situation when we were literally surrounded by trees, clipping trees with our blades. Before they had time to touch down or refuel, they got word that a girl was adrift in the river and in trouble. There she is right there, Mike. She's floating in the water right there. She's still okay. There she is, right there. Okay, she died. She's gonna go down when we get the pipe there. She took the rope off. Masterman tried repeatedly to rescue 14-year-old Melanie Finley, but she was ripped away by the river. I wish I could have got hold of her. And I think 
you know, that we would have had more chance. But fate plays tricks like that. 25 miles away, the Army's 507th Medical Company sent 16 men in four air ambulance helicopters, including Sergeant Keith McKenzie. As I went down, all I could see was scared kids. They were just all over the place, and everyone was yelling, get me, get me. The rescuers were lowered, knowing that if they got caught in the trees, they would be cut loose. Sergeant McKenzie first tried to reach 16-year-old Scott Chatham, already weakened by leukemia and chemotherapy. Army rescuers pulled 26 people out of the trees. By 11.30 that morning, it was over. 33 people had been saved. What's your name? Michelle. 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 But 10 children died in the waters of the Guadalupe River. The river has returned to normal. But the lives it touched remain forever changed. Fifteen-year-old Michelle Jonas can't forget that day, or her friends who didn't survive. Sometimes we'll cry about it, and sometimes we wish we were dead, sometimes and that they were still here. Gene Marsh, now 16, was rescued from the Comfort Flood, but his girlfriend Leslie drowned. We got in a fight and I never got a chance to apologize to her. But if she was still here, I definitely would apologize to her. And I wish she was here so I could. Cortland Sewell's family was torn apart by the tragedy. Two of his children died. All four of my kids were there, and so we lost two, and we got two back, so we know what both ways feels like getting your kids back plus losing your kids. There's an empty spot in my life, <laughs> a big one. And uh, I've tried to think, well, how would it be if, instead of sending Christopher, if it was Michelle and Jamie, it'd be the same. It's a pain that, that you don't, you don't want to know. <laughs> it feels like the inside has been ripped out of you. Ray Masterman finds some comfort in a letter he received from the family of the girl he tried so desperately to save. I've recently read about your efforts to save my sister, and thank you so much for risking your own life to save my sister's. I'm sending you a picture of her so you can think of her the way she was normally instead of the way you saw her. You probably never will be able to, though. Thank you so much again. I'm sorry it has taken me so long to say so. Sergeant McKenzie was responsible for rescuing 15 kids that day. I don't feel myself as being a hero. I was trained to do it, and I was glad to prove myself my training was worth it. After 10 years covering news, David Villarreal put down his camera that day and got involved. That, by far, is the biggest story I have covered in my career, the fact that we were part of it and were able to do something and at least save two of the girls uh, feels like we, you know, we accomplished something. One year later, a memorial was dedicated to the 10 who died, but also to the 33 survivors and the heroes who had risked their lives to save them. At the end of the ceremony, a lone helicopter flew over in tribute. They risked their lives to save our kids. If it weren't for them, we wouldn't be here. I think they really did a miracle for us.